Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad that you are joining with us today. I have loved every single conversation that we have had thus far on Now That's Something Good. Each one brings something a little different and just the joy it is to really hear other people's stories and hear what God is doing, hear their perspectives and their hearts is amazing. I hope that you are enjoying listening to these stories each week. Today, we have a really special friend with us. His name is Clive Gray. He is joining us from all the way around the world. He's here visiting us in the States, and I'm so glad that he took a little bit of his time to join with us and share his story um, and his family's story with us today. I think you're going to be challenged and encouraged and learn something new today as you hear my conversation with Clive. So I want to encourage you, go grab a cup of coffee, get a drink, settle in. This is a little longer episode, but I promise you every moment is so good and I think going to be a huge encouragement to you. So Here we go. Here's my conversation with my friend, Clive. Hey friends, welcome back to Now That's Something Good. I am really excited today to have a longtime friend, really now, of Will and R's, Clive Gray. Hello, hello, Sarah. (laughs) How are you? Nice to see you again. I'm good. Well, Clive, we have to start off. So as people are going to hear you speak... Your accent and my accent (laughs) sound a little different, (laughs) and I think people are really going to enjoy listening to hearing you speak today. Where we just got to start off the bat. Where? Why do our accents sound different? (laughs) Well, our accents sound sound different because God made it a very interesting world, and it's a very diverse world. But I I have a a very particularly unique accent in that I was born in Ireland, Northern Ireland, and as a little boy, I went out on a ship with my mom and dad to Ghana, West Africa, and my first 15 years of my life was in Ghana. Really? And that's a very colonial, international accent. Uh, finished some school in Ireland, married a Floridian, and <laughs> lived in Missouri, and so I have about as neutral an accent as you can get. But as a, <laughs> I'm proud of my Irish accent, and, and if I if you were Irish, it, you'd hear it coming back, so you would say so would. I would. I wish I had an Irish accent. <clears throat> I, my background actually has some Irish descent, but... So really? Would, yes. Really? That's a story for another mm. day. Well, Clive, as we get started, we're going to go all over today, I feel like, in our <laughs> conversation, literally all around the world, because you have been all around the world. Yeah. But just start us off. Give us real basic about who Clive Gray is and your family and a little bit of your just current context, and then we'll jump from there. Who's Clive Gray? Wow, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's a deep, a, question that's a to deep start. <laughs> profound question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the depth of that question maybe for later on. Perfect. But... Um, Clive Gray is, uh, I I mentioned geographically where I came from, and I mentioned uh, some of the things. One of the things I really wanted to do as a young man was to become a pilot. And so I worked very, very hard. Poor parents of missionaries didn't have any money to send me to flight school. And so I came to Florida in the late 80s. Okay. And uh, I met Catherine, a young gal there. I was a single gal, and she was in the youth group there at church. And she was warned sternly. Stay away from the curly-haired European <laughs> flight students. Uh, I feel like she that was had, probably sound advice. She, it was great sound advice. Uh, however, in God's grace, um, we fell in love mm. and we got married. And it was a bit of a rough journey at first, but by God's grace, we have three children, okay. two grandchildren and two on the way. That's You have two grandchildren on the way. Okay. Two grandchildren on the way. And I just saw a scan on the way in here, this little characters moving around and Aww. a lot of discussion whether it's a boy or a girl, but okay. that's, grandpa- that's grandparent talk. That's amazing. <laughs> well, Clive, before we really jump into all of this, hmm. I have to ask you a really important question. Shoot. So... Um, coffee is a really big deal around the good house. And uh, by default, it's kind of become a thing on the Now That's Something Good podcast because uh, I've told you a little bit our heart, about our heart. We were telling you about mm. the podcast and we love just having conversations around here. And so I feel okay. like to have a really good conversation, you usually need a good drink. Now, I feel like we slided you a little bit is I asked you what you wanted to drink when you came in mm. and you were nice and just said water and mm. I didn't even give you a coffee option. That's, so I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> so, and I have to apologize to you because um, I did bring a collection of 
presence, because Indonesians, where we're working right now, are, are very relational people. Okay. And to say that I care about you and I care about you means I give you a present. Really? Okay. So a gift means we're friends, but more than friends, I want to stay friends. Yeah. So I have a selection, uh, and I brought a couple of presents, and I have a couple of precious bags of coffee. <gasps> but here's my problem. I come to the U.S., and I it's about a 50-50 chance people are, are deciding to be water drinkers, and they're not yes. interested in coffee. So I hesitate. But I think I have one of my choice bags in the car. Really? So I might change my mind, or I will add a present for you and Will. You, might add. And you can tell me <laughs> how you like it. That would be awesome, Clive. Will is giving a huge thumbs up behind <laughs> us in the, the studio. Well, if you, if I would have been nicer and offered you mm-hmm. coffee, you've been all over the world to sample. Mm. Diff- what would be your drink of, I mean, it doesn't have to be coffee because we say we're equal opportunity. People like tea. Mm. Some people mm. are water drinkers, but what would be your beverage? Coffee with a friend. I know. It's so coffee good. Coffee with a friend. Any coffee with a friend is a good cup of coffee. That is a good... I agree with you. Yeah, if you drink if you drink a coffee or, or anything by yourself, yeah, um, <laughs> it's just about you, isn't it? That's true. And so to have a, a, cup of, a good cup, a cup of coffee and uh, something to talk about, but to connect face-to-face with another person, that's yes. the best cup of coffee. I agree with you, Clive. So I hope that if you guys are listening, maybe you need to pause us real quick and go get a cup of coffee or a cup of hot tea yes. or even a glass of water and then yeah. pull up and listen to our conversation because I think we're going to yeah. take you on a great little journey with us today. So settle in for our conversation. So Clive, I want to jump back because mm. some of this, I've gotten to know you a little bit. I'm just going to mm. tell people how we know each mm. other um, through Two Rivers Church. Yes. Two Rivers Church has been a friend of Clive and Catherine Gray mm. for a long time yes. and the ministry that God has called you into. And so since I work there, I was able to meet you further into the journey. You've actually been around Two Rivers longer than I've been around Two Rivers. And that's a while. Yes, but I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> it is a while. But so that's how we got to meet each other. And I was just so fortunate that you had time on your schedule when you were here that you would come share with us. So this is where I kind of want to start. I didn't realize... So we're still getting to learn about each other, mm. really. We've had mm. a handful of conversations, but some of the backstory of Clive and Catherine, I don't really know. So mm. you just said something interesting. I didn't realize your parents were missionaries. Correct. Can you talk about, I mean, like, just talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it was just another world of, 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 uh, of cross-cultural missions. I mean, we're talking about back in the, the 60s and the okay. 70s here. And I mean, we read about these people, but I was a baby and I was a child and they, I, and, and they took us, a, it was a 40 mile across a bumpy road and a big wow. river that was just full of crocodiles. And then it was five miles on a bicycle uh, to, wow. the, to the village where my parents were. And I was a little boy. And, and I, I, I had been told as about a two-year-old, I had bronchial pneumonia, which came on very, very seriously in the middle wow. of the night. No radios, no helicopters back then to come and get you. And they prayed fervently for Clive mm. to make it through the night. And nobody... For at, at any cost whatsoever, there was absolutely nobody who would be willing to take baby Clive, my mom and dad, across the river, wow. across the hospital. And the biggest fear wasn't that nobody knew how to use a canoe or the crocodiles. It was the spirits that lived in the river. Mm. You daren't go across that river at night. And they wow. prayed. And I've got a strong chest. I, I can run 5K with that. Too much difficulty. Thanks be to God. That's amazing. That see, look right there. That was a great story. I did not know. That's a bit, so. Then did you come back? So what happened when you grew up? You were. Did you I go grew back up in fifteen. Then I went back to Ireland. Okay. I went back to Ireland, Sarah, and I was there. I went to high school there. And you know, I'm a third culture kid. Third culture kids, uh, you know, have multiple passports, and yeah. they live in in different parts of the world, and they're at ease. They're most at ease in third culture environments. Okay. Whether it's an Asian person or an African American, we feel most at home in, in in a mix of cultures. Okay. And so, what happens is difficult for us when we go back to maybe one. Little monoculture, yeah. And I struggle at a big, bushy, wild hair, which you guys can't see, but I don't have any of that right now, <laughs> and it doesn't matter anymore. But um, I went back to Northern Ireland there, and I really struggled because mm. I hadn't grown up with these people in an estate in Northern Ireland, right? Um, right. So I was on a journey of identity of who I am, and okay. and God answered that in His time, much later. 
Well, I want to hear a little bit about more, more about that. But just so clarity, we're going to talk, we're going to throw out the word missionary a little bit. Okay. If we have friends that are listening and maybe that's not a familiar term to them, how would you just yeah. explain or define yeah. a missionary? Okay. Well, a missionary is an older term. It is. And I'll be yeah. honest with you, it's it's a term that when the great missionary endeavor, about 100, 150 years ago, mm-hmm. missionaries were sent out from England, from Wales, they went to China, they went to Africa. Yeah. And it was just a huge movement. And, and it's going on to today. Uh, Catherine, myself, I think have moved away. We're kind of post terminology yes. in many, even in our Christian speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got very familiar with things like evangelism and outreach, mm-hmm. and none of these words are in the Bible. No, right? they're not. <laughs> right, right. And even missions. Right. And so we've got very familiar with these terms. So, so Catherine, myself, as we are maturing, we're asking deeper questions. What does what does this mean? Mm-hmm. And it, the truth of the matter is, uh, it's much simpler, this idea of being uh, a, a representative. Mm-hmm. We are people of God. We're people of faith yeah. who get to live in another environment, another culture, mm-hmm. and we live out that faith. I love that. And there's something more wholesome about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people become less of a project. People feel less put upon. Right, right. And when you befriend people out there and you get to know them yeah. and they realize you're not one of those. Right. You're not <laughs> does, that, coming, does that begin to answer your question for I, you? It does. And I want to come back to that in a minute because I think that's huge. And I think that's something that we could all live by better. But let's, okay, let's, so let's go, we'll come back to that. You want to go back to the story? Yes. Okay. No, I want to hear all of this. So <laughs> I'm fascinated by a pilot. Did you always know like I you wanted, wanted to I always wanted to be a pilot. When I was a little kid in Nigeria, I saw a little airplane landing. Mm. They say I was about five years old. And I do remember this little mission airplane landing. And I remember going with my mom and dad. Um, and I remember the pilot playing chess with my dad okay. in the cockpit. And I just thought, how amazing is this? And mm. um, it's something I always wanted to be. Not just a pilot, but I wanted to be a missionary pilot. Yeah. And so I worked very hard. I was used useless at school. I was bored. But when it got serious about learning, I was an me- aircraft mechanic first. Okay. And it was extremely difficult, uh, married to Catherine and a baby trying to buy diapers yeah. and trying to find, pull together some uh, the fees to become a pilot and get some flight time. And it took many, many hard days uh, waiting on tables and <laughs> welding trailers and painting houses and cutting trees. But eventually I, we came up, uh, I met a family in St. Louis, in Florida. Okay. And, and and they took me on as their corporate pilot. Wow. And a uh, guy in Armini suit, and uh, he was an Italian, and he just said, Clive, I like you, man. I like the way you fly the plane. I like the way you talk to my people. I like you, the way you remember our names. And he says, I want you to be my pilot. And that That's was amazing. five years of uh, wonderful experience down in Florida. Wow. Okay. And then we came up to St. Louis. Yeah, how did you get and, to St. Uh, Louis? Yeah, I came to St. Louis at that time. Uh, finally, uh, jet corp, um, Learjet pilots were in great demand, and I was a captain, and okay. I could pick and choose in the early 90s. And so we came out to Lake St. Louis and drove a little minivan and went to church, and we yeah. were just good we were just good people. But I'll be honest with you, Sarah, I, I was on a journey. My early life, I made a lot of crazy choices. Um, okay. And uh, I, I thought I had discounted and disqualified mm. myself into Christian service. Mm. And so in the middle of taking care of some very powerful family in, uh, here in St. Louis and and flying for them and taking care of their meals and their rental cars and their hotels. I was a butler of the sky. Okay. And um, I did that for several years. And then God came came knocking on my door, which surprised me. I will never forget getting this uh, book in the mail. And I don't know, maybe maybe an angel delivered it. I don't know where (laughs) it came from, Sarah. But I got this book called The Peace Child. And it was Mm. an amazing story of a young couple in the 60s pedaling upstream uh, with a little child into the tribes people of Irian Jaya, which is now West Papua. Okay. And I was so struck by that story, I just couldn't put the book down. How God revealed himself in the darkest of places and how lives were changed. Yeah. And my corporate life flying an $8 million jet mm. just was the most foreign contrast. Right. And I'll never forget flying to Colorado, where we regularly went. It was at wintertime. It was a day similar to today, very clear and cold. Mm. And I remember 
very vividly how much visibility, and that's the visible, how far we can see ahead. Okay. And I could see 100 miles, 120 miles, and I've never seen that much distance before across these beautiful Rockies. The plane was an autopilot, the co-pilot was doing their business. And I remember the flickering of the screens to this day, and all I sensed was God's Spirit keep bringing this book back into my mind, Mm -hmm. and it wouldn't let me go. And I remember almost uh, zooming back out of my life. Wow. And I had a moment of me and this extremely wealthy experience with these people. And I had a sense that God just asked me a question, Clive, what are you doing? Hmm. What what is this? I was 37 years old. I'm at the top of my career. I'm managing big responsibilities. And God's saying, Hmm. what are you doing? Hmm. It was a good question. It was a good question. (laughs) (laughs) How did you answer? Well, <laughs> I don't know if you can answer that. <laughs> Are you leaving us there? I'm, Wait, that's a cliffhanger. I'm, 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 well, that's a good story, isn't it? Yeah, you got you, you to, if you dial in next week, I'll finish that You'll story. Fa- <laughs> Call, come back next week. for. <laughs> uh, I'm still answering that question. I don't yeah. think we should ever stop asking no. that question. You know, when we say that God is done with us and we are now in a, in a, in a under place of understanding and we know him, we've stopped the mm-hmm. journey with him, right? Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. And so um, the, the amazing thing is that Catherine in her wisdom, my wonderful wife in her wisdom, she said, you need to go talk to Pastor Gary, who was a pastor at the time up okay. in another church. And he had been a spiritual mentor of mine, Sarah. And uh, she said, go have lunch with him. So I'm sitting across the table with this lovely elderly man who's now in heaven. Mm. And he said, Clive, what's going on? And I said, I'll tell you what's going on. I said, I read this book, and I said, it won't let me go. Mm. He said, what's holding you back? Mm. And I said, you know, my story, you know, some of the crazy things I've done. That... And I said, I don't feel worthy mm. that God could use me in cross-cultural, be a minister and work overseas. Yeah. Oh, Alexa, we're confused. Alexa, Alexa, jo- please come and join us. <laughs> I'm telling you, random things happen sometimes. Okay, so. I think we're confusing the algorithm. They, they're things they've never heard of before. <laughs> they're confused. Um, but but I, I reached across this, and he said, "What's holding you back?" Yeah. And at, you know, here I am, a, a head of a large, ex, uh, extremely valuable flight operation with all the responsibilities that come with it, and and, and I'm carrying my head in shame, and I said. Mm. Uh, you know my story. Mm-hmm. You know my legacy and my background. You know my story. And you know the, some of the many foolish things that I've done years mm-hmm. ago. I don't feel worthy that yeah. God could use me. Mm-hmm. And with a big tear in his eye, without a hesitation, a big smile, he said, but you're absolutely right, Clive. Mm-hmm. You're not worthy. It is your life with Jesus mm-hmm. that makes you worthy. Yes. And I had to take that in because I believed that, but it hadn't let it in. And that's the truth of the matter that I, uh, we're not worthy. He Mm -hmm. said, none of us are worthy without Christ. And it's not until we really yield to that place, he says, that God can really begin to use us. And that was, what, 2002? So that's that's some of the story. That's huge. Well, I want to just ask you a question about that because I, I feel like you probably just touched on something that probably I know I have felt in my life Mm -hmm. and probably every single person listening can identify on some level to go, hey, I kind of feel like there's this stirring or something, but Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that because I'm not worthy or I'm not qualified in this area or I don't have the training or fill in the blank with anything. What would you say to just encourage our (laughs) friends further if they're feeling that or saying that right now? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, if we just look at Scripture, the enemy is a, a master mm. at tricking us absolutely, into giving us a, a, a false identity, mm-hmm. a false self of who we are. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people, there's an imposter syndrome, and a lot yeah. of people deal with this issue. They put on a face, they mm-hmm. put on even a good religious Christian face, yeah. but they deal with this inner life that's in conflict with that. Mm-hmm. And the truth of the matter is he, the enemy... Or ourselves and doubt is constantly whispering these lies to us. Yes. And it brings on fear, it brings on anxiety, it brings on doubt. Mm-hmm. Now, not to do that would be not human, hmm. right, right, Sarah? Right. And so 
Uh, and also to, to stay in a place of woundedness is mm-hmm. something where we need help with. And we ask the Lord on, 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 a, on a journey for that. Yes. But I think there are a lot of people, even very professional people in ministry, even very qualified people mm-hmm. live with this strong sense that I shouldn't be here mm-hmm. and, 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 I'm a, and I'm an imposter. Right, right. But it's not about me. No. It's not no. about you, Sarah. It's no. about God at work in us. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, Man, we're getting into some big stuff early on here, aren't we? This is where we go here, Clive. This is where (laughs) that's the good stuff because I think so many people struggle, right? We we don't do what God has sometimes called us to do because, like you said, the enemy is a liar, and we feel we get paralyzed sometimes. We do, and and then we're not doing any of that, and that's what the enemy would love because if we're not using the gifts that God's called us to do, then yeah. The enemy in the kingdom of evil is continuing the win when yeah. God's like, hey, I need you and I can actually use yeah. that brokenness and I can use yeah. those messed up parts. Yeah. If you would bring them to me, I'm going to help and then you're going to do amazing things. And it's not by yourself. It's not Clive. It's not Sarah. It's with God. Hey, and we forget scripture. We forget uh, the, you know, the disciples, not mm-hmm. just the ones we regularly read about, the 12, right. but there were many, many disciples. And God continued mm-hmm. to use some of the least qualified, some yes. of the least worthy. If we were to write the script, you know, you've got swindlers and you've yes. got prostitutes mm-hmm. and you've got, you know, people, Samaritans, you know, the lowest right. of lows. Um, you know, in our society today, we too have people that we think are the lowest of lows, but when they are yielded and they come to Christ uh, and they decide that they're going to follow him full, Mm -hmm. I think we should never lose where we came from. Right. And so then we see more of him and and, and, and less of me. That's all of our goals need to be that. (laughs) We just sometimes get ourselves in the way. So you had that conversation with your pastor friend. Yeah. What happened after? Like, Well, at that very moment, Sarah, honestly, uh, some of the weight of... I literally felt a a, Mm. a burden of shame had been lifted from me that uh, the enemy had put on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And, And I'm sure people listening today can identify with... With crazy foolish things that they have mm. done in their past, right? And uh, it's a lie of the devil just to keep you in that place there, yeah. because when we end, when we encounter Christ, He gives us this new life. He gives mm. us this new beginning. He He resets yes our journey. And by the way, He wasn't asleep when all that took place, right? But He still loves you, mm. and He still wants to know you, and He wants to use you. Yes. And some of the most extraordinary stories in Christian missions, Sarah, have been some of the people who who went to agencies and they were rejected. Hmm. One lady was 22, went out to Hong Kong, and, and she said she went to seven agencies and they said, no, come back at 25. That's our policy for being wow. mature enough. She says, but God's calling me now. Hmm. And now, almost 50 years later, when you see what God did for this woman, it's just extraordinary. Wow. And so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you had that moment, but something ha- So what happened between... Clive Gray, who was flying corporate planes, yeah. had this great job, all this stuff, and then kind of had this pull and draw. God clearly yeah. calling you. What happened? That what happened next? Well, there was there was there was okay. There was another channel that was going on, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Now you're you're, you're having me think of things that I haven't thought of in a while. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know if the, the the story is getting bigger or the the memory is getting smaller. Okay. Okay. Maybe both. But but one of the things that was running at the same time is we had a comfortable life. Mm-hmm. You know, our kids were in Christian school. I was making a very good salary. But we were finding ourselves competing with peers. Mm-hmm. Even though I wasn't the millionaire that we were flying around, we ended up on this treadmill of needing more and acquiring mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And the Lord was beginning to show that Clive and Catherine, too, was on this on this life of... of 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 me, it was a self focused mm-hmm. life, and my comfort and my entertainment and my importance with mm-hmm. my peers in, in Sunday school or whatever, and and I looked at how dissatisfied the millionaires and the stars and the football players that I flew worth millions upon millions and had homes in three states. Mm. But their hollowness and the emptiness came through. And I, the Lord was just giving me a glimpse at 37, kind of at the, a cusp in life saying, you know, I have more for you, Clive. Mm. I want to use you and your journey so far. Yeah. And, then, and so then he, <laughs> we 
we went uh, we sold we, we sold our house um, we gave stuff away and we donated yeah. it's funny because you go to Sunday school and you tell people that you're leaving by the time we got home our answer machine was full we told people that we were leaving and the answer machine was full and and, and I remember one message that says uh, Clive you know we just think that's wonderful that you and Catherine are going to go overseas I'm sorry forgive my bad American accent here <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we just think, God bless you, and we just, we want to be behind you, and we're really excited about you. Yeah. Uh, are, are you selling a mower? Oh, my goodness. They were asking for your stuff <laughs> before you'd even. <laughs> does it, does that's it, great. Could, it, could that happen? That's, you yeah. could see that happening. I, yes. That's hilarious. You're like, hey, I'm not even left, and you want to buy my stuff. Okay, great. <laughs> So we went to Bible college, even though we didn't need to go. We went to Ireland for Bible college. Okay. And all the way along the way, you know, we didn't have, we had savings and we had some resources for a, 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 a semester. Okay. And this began the journey. We didn't have a second semester of college fees. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember the, 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 it was time to come up with the money after Christmas. And this was one of many, many, many examples of the journey since then. A gentleman who owns a backhoe company, he's just a small operator. He's barely known us. He comes and knocks on my mom's door. And he pounds on the door, and he wouldn't come in. He was acting kind of weird and uneasy. And I invited him to come in and have a cup of tea. That's what we do in Ireland. (laughs) And he gave me an envelope. He said, God told me to give this to you. And it was a a large envelope of cash. And it was exactly what we needed (laughs) for the next semester. Now, that was in 2004, 2005, Mm -hmm. and we went to language school. And story after story after story of God being with us, surprising us, protecting us, and providing. Yeah. How much time do you got? (laughs) No, I was so good. Well, I want to hear a couple of those stories, but I want to back up. So, because Catherine's not here to share her part of the story, but I'm just wondering, like, what was going on? Like... Mm. Was God moving in her yeah. her heart at the same time, or was this like a hey? I think we should sell our stuff and go <laughs> be a missionary. Like that's that could be a hard conversation depending <laughs> on how that. So I need to know a little it's, more details about how that went. Class, it's a great question. Now to enter the 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 the, the, uh, the depths and the plums of of a of a woman's mind. <laughs> Is beyond. Um, I'm not sure anybody can can, can go there. That's probably a very true statement. I'm, I hear Will laughing behind me. <laughs> yes, <here>. <laughs> but. <laughs> I get glimpses of this. You're correct. Catherine had worked so hard, and we, for so many years, we had done without anything. We were so poor for so long. Yeah. Now there were modest luxuries right, and a right. safety and conveniences, and conven- uh, you know, yes. there were some things that she could decide what to do with her day, and there was money in banks mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. So it's a good question because it wasn't just about my my journey. And mm-hmm. thank you for bringing that out. the The funny thing is, is that. God was dealing with Catherine at the same time, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to me. Yeah. She grew up in a small, uh, broken family in Florida, mm-hmm. and uh, she came to came to know the Lord uh, later uh, in her teenage life, and she just had so many things against her so, uh, as an only child. Mm-hmm. And she was the least likely person to go on a mission trip. So she went to Nicaragua, and she's building buildings, and she's using plaster and mortar and bricks, wow. and she's down there building bricks in the middle of the Sun's uh, middle of the noonday sun, and she just realized with her soft, um, manicured hands, <laughs> um, I, I am being I am being asked to do something that I've mm. never done before, and she she began to get a sense that God was asking her to do something different. Mm. Now the funny thing is. I didn't want to tell Catherine about this book, and I didn't want to tell Catherine about the stirring in my heart. I didn't want to disappoint her. Right. I didn't want to let her know, and, and who knows what crazy stuff would begin. <laughs> so for three weeks, I held off from Catherine telling her. Meanwhile, she goes to Nicaragua, and the deeper things that God was doing in mm. her life, Sarah, she didn't want to tell me. She says, Clive's worked so hard for his career, and look at him now, Mm. and he's finally made it, and it's a pretty cushy number. And so she basically said for three weeks, she she held this in her heart. And we came together one day, and we started to share notes, which is, you know, uh, as a good husband and wife do. And we eased into this realization, I thought you didn't want to, would ever consider this. And she says, I I thought you wouldn't. (laughs) And I said, well, so are you saying that you're going to begin this crazy, reckless, abandoned life. Mm. And 
I would like to think, I would like to think, Sarah, that she wouldn't, I'm quite sure she wouldn't doubt for a minute mm. that it has been the most amazing journey that we're still on. Yeah, you are still on it. I love, I love that story so much because I think God can, when he's really moving. And sometimes mm. there's reasons why both spouses won't, I mean, or whatever, there's things that happen, but I think when lives are really mm. just humbled to whatever God and he's working and moving, it's he does it in both people, especially when it's big, huge and, stuff like that. And I think he does it at different times, too. Yes. They may be planting a seed. I mean, he was yes. stirring for, uh, in as a young man to be a missionary pilot. Uh, yeah. Um, and then the missionary pilot season ended, and now we're still in, we're still involved in Christian work over there. But God, God is timeless, yes. right? And he's telling yeah. his own story yes. in people's lives. And when they, a couple come together, sometimes th- th- it's out of sync, mm-hmm. but... God knows what he's doing. He does. He he does. So you guys, your first kind of big move. I was, yes, move. Mm-hmm. Tell everybody where that was. We were and, in Lake St. Louis. We okay. had a nice house. And um, the house didn't sell. And we had money to pay the mortgage. And again, some people, we were really concerned that the house was going to cause us a problem. We're in mm-hmm. Bible college. We're living by faith. Yeah. We had no other source of income at that time. But a group of men who knew me and met with me, they wanted to know what our mortgage payment bill was and and where the bank was. And they said, uh, we'll take care of one month. And I think they paid 12 months. (laughs) That's amazing. That's great. (laughs) That's mortgage insurance, right? Yeah, that is. (laughs) At its best. At the very best, yes. yes. So you guys did that and then... Went to Ireland for Bible school. We went to school, Ireland, and, and then, then uh, Two Rivers were a big part of setting us up and packing us up. Yeah. Uh, just got a little thumbs up to, you know, <laughs> and again, yeah, the surprise was we didn't have a strong relationship. There were some key people, hmm. heard Catherine and myself. We had a, 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 a round table in some cafe down K. Okay. And then we got a phone call uh, from one of the, your key guys way back then who said, we're going to take you on. Wow. And others have fallen, but Two Rivers is still with us. Wow. And uh, But, you know, it's wonderful that to have that legacy and to have that, uh, what, six, 15, 16 years yes. with Two Rivers Church. That's amazing. And, and it's only got better. And now we've got Sarah running the show. That's, <laughs> that's not a true. <laughs> I'm one of many. Well, so talk to me for just a second, too, because I love to hear all the different angles. You said you had three children. We do. So when you moved and went to, it was Papua, right? Is that the first? We went to Java to learn the language, Bahasa, okay. Indonesia. And okay. we, we had to learn the, the trade language. And, yes. Um, How was that? I mean, well, learning... for Catherine, I don't know if it's just the way a, a brain works in my wife, but she just picked it up and she, wow. I think she did her homework and I didn't, <laughs> but she just raced through it and yeah. she just, you know, she, she was just saying good morning, hello, and you know, I've got a blue roof just like that. And what's the name of the language called? Bahasa, 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 Bahasa. Indonesia. Can you say something to us in? Boleh, saya akan berbicara Bahasa Indonesia, nama saya Pak Clive, dan ya, siapa kamu? I said, my name's Clive, and, and what's your name? That's amazing. That, yeah. I love it. Uh, but I, it didn't go that well at first, and it was a very humbling experience, because I remember Sarah sitting with about 20 other Westerners mm. in this language school, and module one is a month long. Okay. And we have to learn, you know, greetings, where do we live, how are you, I have three children, and how many children do you have? Yeah. It's pretty basic stuff, and it's not a difficult language. Okay. Well... I don't know if I was dreaming out the window or what, but I quickly fell behind. And the dunces or the thickos moved to the back of the class and the brainy boxes <laughs> moved forward. It, it didn't outpace me. I just fell behind. Yeah. Well, they have an interview with to make sure you make this easy transition into Module 2. Wow. And everybody races through Module 2. And... Uh, uh, they had an interview with me uh, to make sure that, you know, they, they wanted to thank me. And they just had, they said, we just have a few questions for you, Puck Clive. We just want to encourage you. and We thank you for all that you've done. We have a few questions for you. So they asked simple questions. You know, what's your name? And what's the color of the roof of your house? Okay. And we had learned this in a month. And so I answered them. And they smiled and they looked very kindly at me. There were three of them. And they, they, they Pilates, the coaches. And they said, Puck Clive. We really appreciate your participation, and thank you for coming to our country. Um, your question, the answers were very good answers. Unfortunately, the answers didn't match, match the questions oh, we no. asked. I, I said, did any of them? They said, no. You gave the wrong answers to <laughs> but, the- but what a humbling experience, Sarah. 
wow. from running and flying mil- millionaires yeah. in a Learjet to being the idiot at the back of the class. <laughs> and so, but it was, a, it was a rich journey because it was more than language. We're learning mm. culture. We're learning right. some examples. And uh, So I have to ask, I mean, so somehow, did, how did, did you get, get yourself? I was like, because you... <laughs> that was... Uh, <laughs> they must have let you back in somehow. That was 15 or? years ago. I, I did graduate and, okay. and uh, we... We do speak, uh, Catherine and I speak Bahasa Indonesia. And how long were you guys in Indonesia? We were 10 years on the island, and then okay. I was visiting when the kids came back. And um, uh, we went back and did a master's degree. Okay. And we did some further training as our kids grew up and settled. And we really, really wanted to go back again. Mm-hmm. I was visiting Indonesia for a month at a time. And in October, Catherine and I moved in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> People thought we were crazy, which we yeah. are. And God opened a door. Uh, Scripture says, you know, when God opens a door, no man can Mm -hmm. shut it. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have that confidence that we follow God. I mean, the same God God who parted the Red Sea, the same God who who showed himself as as a pillar of fire, a pillar Mm -hmm. of of cloud. I mean, he's a God who wants to be known. He's a God who wants to be seen. And and we didn't have any pillars of of fire in our lives, but we did have that same God leading us and guiding us. And I think the more time we've been out there, the more we are confident in that. That's amazing. So you were saying, so you now tell everybody, because I think you didn't, we didn't fully say or come back around. Now, where are you in Catherine? Now we're on the island. Uh, Indonesia is an island, a bunch mm-hmm. of islands. It's a huge, beautiful, beautiful country. And each one of these islands, you've got Sumatra, Sulawesi. By the okay. way, great coffee come from each of these islands. Good. Okay, that's good to know. One. I'm going to make a trip. <laughs> and Java. And then there's the island of Bali. Okay. And it's a very Hindu country. Uh, it's primarily Hindu. And they are beautiful people. They're very traditional people. They have uh, very beautiful outfits and they have ceremonies on the street or on the beach all day long, all, yeah. all through the weeks. They, somebody is doing something. And uh, they're really lovely people to get to know. Hmm. And just tell us, I know you. we joked, I kind of asked you, I said, what's Catherine doing today? And you're like, every day is a little different. <laughs> but kind of just tell us, I know you're just building relationships right now. We're building is, relationships. Mm-hmm. Catherine is is uh, already well into um, Wednesday morning. So she's 14 hours ahead of us. Yes. Okay. And Catherine is down there and she's got people she's meeting. She's got uh, professors she works with mm-hmm. in the local university. Uh, and I'm not sure which day it is, but three, uh, two days a week, we have three students that mm-hmm. come to our house. And yes, it's to enhance their English, mm-hmm. but always life questions, those deeper mm-hmm. questions of why we're here, what is really important. And in those contexts, Catherine and myself are able to share. So I hover around, mm-hmm. I get the bottles of water and help with the food and, okay. and, and make sure the technology works if she needs it. Um, but I'm listening. And when God leads, I sit down, and uh, we just had some extraordinary, extraordinary stories. Just um, a few weeks ago, one of the gentlemen, uh, his whole thesis is on um, something about uh, Queen and the whole okay. story of Bohemian Rhapsody. So, because these are college students, right? Just college to students. clarify, okay, they're these are college, college students. students, okay. And, and this this whole idea, and, and I just jumped in there, and I said, I don't know if you know this, I do like Queen, and I do like yeah. his music. He's very classic and, and very and talented. But I don't know if you know this, but he, 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 he as with many of these uh, rock stars, they wrote from a deep place of pain, hmm. and they all agreed. They all knew that. Wow. And we got into a whole conversation about how that empty vacuum in one's life, that emptiness mm. that many of these singers have. I said, there's only one place you're going to fill that. You're only going to fill that when you encounter Jesus, the living God, for yourself. Mm. Eyes, yeah, <laughs> eyes get really big when they keep hearing that over yes. and over. Yeah. So to live life there in, in context, mm. in a relational context, it's most important and I think this is one of the shifts for us, Sarah, is moving away from program mindset, mm-hmm. where we we study a manual, how to do this, sharing our faith. Right. Um, it comes out canned, and people can tell. Yeah. And so when we're having a bad day or we're needing some encouragement from our faith mm-hmm. in God, uh, to be able to share that. But... Most importantly, to live even in difficult times, COVID's a big issue down there right mm-hmm. now. A lot of people have lost their jobs. One of the mm-hmm. most important things is to be able to live in an authentic way 
the hope that we have yes. in knowing Christ. Yes. And they are very relational people. They're very perceptive people. Mm. And they can tell when there's any, it's a big word, disingen- disingenuous. Yes. When there's anything insincere. Mm-hmm. But when you're true and you care and you look at people yeah. uh, with a heart of love, mm. uh, people respond to that. Yes. You want to tell us any other stories just from your time there? <laughs> or um, Well, yeah, it's just been an extraordinary time down there. I think one of the things that can increasingly opens our eyes is to won their commitment to faith. I mean, mm-hmm. they're just incredibly committed people. Whether you're Muslim or whether you come from another one of the religions or Hindu, where mm-hmm. we are there, I mean, their commitment to appeasing the gods is yes. uh, tremendous. I mean, they're up every day praying and wow. they're making sacrifices, mm. and uh, it's extremely important to them. So it's cultural and it's spiritual, but uh, it's just amazing how how committed they are to them. But I think the other thing that's opened our eyes a lot, Sarah, has also just the prevalence of darkness. It's mm-hmm. a very, it's, a, it's an island of the gods. It's an island of the demons. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's so many things I cannot answer other than the fact that we have just had some amazing, uh, some pretty rough times mm-hmm. where not just the presence of darkness, but they yeah. actually have shown themselves, mm. not visibly, but they've, they've, they've revealed themselves to right, us. Right. But you claim the name of Jesus over them, they run. They run like, <laughs> they run like, a, like the squirrel out that window that's, there. <laughs> that's good. That's good. What's been the biggest, as you've gotten to experience different cultures mm. firsthand, what has been one of the, maybe let's say it this way, like most surprising thing about being in Bali that maybe just you wouldn't have realized or just something beautiful about their culture there and the people there and well uh again i i come back to this i mean i have had lots of experience living in different countries yes and i love a variety of food okay they yeah. have all their wonderful curries and they have um but it's funny because you know uh, for the muslim they don't eat uh, pork yes and uh, some of the hindus won't eat uh, beef okay and so if in doubt Catherine and i will just make a vegetable stew and and uh, we play it safe. safe okay but I, I think what's probably surprised us most um, is just the awareness, mm. the awareness of the darkness and the forces that have been. Um, they say the dogs see the see the demons, mm. and uh, I hope I don't lose anybody here. But <laughs> there was one particular night, and I've had several, but there was one particular night where the dogs just went crazy in the middle of the night. Yeah, and. Um, Sure enough, there was a bang on the door and click, clack, clatter and mm-hmm. in the room at night, in the middle of the night. And Catherine's with me asleep. I'm used to this. I, I'm, this, is old. I'm, uh, this is nothing new. But this particular time, they, you could feel the goosebumps. You could mm-hmm. just feel the presence of darkness. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a presence. It's an mm-hmm. actual thing. Uh, and uh, I just claim the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. Mm-hmm. You have no authority. Mm-hmm. And they leave. The dogs barked again. Mm-hmm. I said, Really? And they come again. Third time, the dogs were announcing the arrival of the dark forces. Mm. And this time, I lost my breath. It was like somebody was taking wow. air out of me. Uh-huh. And yes, that kind of that, freaked me a little bit. Yeah, say, that's a little scary, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> so now I said, okay, sweetheart, enough of your beauty sleep. Yeah. I, I'm going to wake you up this time. And usually I let her sleep. Mm. And I woke her up and I said, Catherine, pray with me. Yeah. And she heard it. I said, listen, there are the dogs. Here they are. We'll chase them off again. Yeah. But what I think, I share that story with a pastor couple, and uh, the Indonesians, if you enter this conversation, they're quite privileged and honored that you understand the mm. war of darkness that, okay. that, that everybody is at over there. And I remember asking her, I said, what happened with me and the dogs? She had a beautiful perspective. She said, one that I've never thought of before, she said, isn't that beautiful, Clive? Mm. You had that experience with Jesus. Hmm. Instead of looking at the demons, she flipped it and she saw Jesus with me. Wow. And so, but Hmm. all this journey to trust, to trust God, Sarah, to have him provide for you and protect for you Mm -hmm. is um, what I'm getting to see. What Catherine and I, we are the, we are the benefactors of Mm -hmm. this journey, even more than we could ever give. So amazing. I want to jump back, Clive, and ask you a question because you have three kids. You yes. said they're all grown yes. now. What was just, I mean, I know I'm asking you to speak on their behalf, but how <laughs> old, what was the age ranges kind of when you first 
took them from here because they spent most of their time growing up in the United States. They did. And they then did. They you did. guys went to Indonesia. What yeah. did, how old were they when all of that was kind of going well, on? Well, Catherine, forgive me. She'll have the dates in her no, head okay. and I won't. No, were they like <laughs> little elementary Chloe, school? Chloe was eight. Uh, okay. Uh, Kelsey would have been about 11 or 12 and Colby was 13, 14. Okay. We were told that around 14 is the threshold for changing cultures. Okay. okay after that, okay. you kind of need to stay there. One of the things I think Kath and myself agreed upon when it came to this journey is we included them. Mm-hmm. And rather than dictating that we were going to haul them out of their friends. Yeah. And I'll never forget sitting in this empty house in Lake St. Louis. We had given away and sold our lawnmowers and anything, any of our junk that people really wanted to have. We either gave it to them or we sold it to them. And I'll never forget sitting in this empty room Mm. in a house that was a comfortable house with our kids who had had Christmases there, who had had friends play there, and we had shared meals there. Yeah. But Chloe and Kelsey and Colby and Catherine and Clive sat on this floor with no furniture. And we were at the cusp of getting ready to leave on this crazy journey. And I remember Catherine and I, one of us brought up, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are okay with this yeah. and you're okay at peace with this, hmm. and which we felt that they had been included in the decision. Yeah. Because I would say if one of them had felt very firmly not to do it, I think that we would have really listened hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. But I remember Colby sitting up, he was kind of laying on the, he was on his back and he wasn't you know, dialed in as a 13-year-old or 12-year-old. Yeah. I remember him sitting up and he now looked straight at us and he said, if God has told us to do that Hmm. as a family, not to do it would be disobedient. Wow. He said, we have to do this. (laughs) And that was... um, that was from a child. They say they have childlike faith, right? <laughs> and sometimes our kids are the biggest ones just going, hey, no, this is what this is what we should do. We need yeah. to do this. And just they trust so much easier sometimes than we do the older we get. Indeed. I love that. Okay, Clive. So I want to ask you a question, another question. Shoot. You and Catherine have been married 30, 30 years. 30 years. December, we passed 30 years. That's yes. amazing because in today's day and age, a lot of people do not make it being married that long, which is it's sad. So we're going to, I'm going to share some information with all of our people listening. We're going to, mm. this is going to air February. This is should be the third, I think, when people are listening to it. This okay. is just the day before. Sure. So, you know, here in America, we, you know, Valentine's Day, oh, that's yes. a big, that's a big coming deal. Up. And we're not going to be cheesy Thanks around here me. about it. But I know, yeah, don't forget. <laughs> no. And we're not big on commercial holidays in the good family we mm-hmm. kind of will i never remember this is a will good story early on he was he was just always like well why i should just give you gifts anytime like it's isn't it losing something if mm. i give you a gift because there's a holiday mm. that tells me i should and so part of me was like that's beautiful and part of mm. me was like i think i should get gifts on both i'm just i, I didn't really but we relationships are so big and yeah. whether it is a husband wife whether it's friends whether you're in a dating stage or just whatever that is relationships are huge yes. but because you've been married for 30 years Clive I feel like you have some wisdom that you could impart on all <laughs> oh, of us no matter whether our no. listeners are married or they're single None. what has been maybe one of the biggest what's a be- what's in a piece of advice you could give wow somebody who's maybe yeah not no quite as far then. along. Yeah. Can you think of? So uh, to the, I was told early on uh, from a wise old man in Ireland, he says, Clive, there's essentially, uh, there are two words that you really need to get down well. <laughs> and they are, yes, dear. <laughs> okay. That's, that's so the good. more I, I can say that, um, the more that I can live mm. that. Yeah. But, but, you know, a wife is a wonderful example of that. You know, it's just a great example of living out my faith because mm-hmm. uh, it's easy to go and listen to it, and it's easy to go even to sit and have a coffee and tell somebody else how to do it. Yeah. But to to walk in life, because I'm an errantly selfish person. I mean, I, I want to take care of me and my needs. I think we all want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I, it's about me. And I mm-hmm. wake up every morning with this big self. Yeah. And the, the spiritual maturity journey is to yield that, Sarah, and mm. to give that over and say, it's not me. Yeah. You know, my life isn't my own. It's a gift. And it's not about me. And the first person beside me when I wake up is this wonderful woman mm-hmm. in a great place where I can yield. And it may she may have asked one more time that I feel like going to I, I make her an iced coffee every morning. <laughs> Wherever That's we are okay. in the world, she says nobody makes it. A cold Americano with ice. 
Hey, and, and she says, <laughs> she says, it's the love that I put into it. I stir. Wow. It's the love I stir into it. And, and, you know, this is something that Catherine and I have, and we do yeah. have little things like that. But it's in, in, ver- in every instance of any relationship, any time there's a conflict, hmm. the ego is involved. Mm-hmm. And when the ego is involved, it gets offended. It, it is put out. And it's what a great place when you're with a partner in life who yeah. shares space and does things differently mm-hmm. to be able to say, ah, but because I love you, yeah. I'm going to put you first and I'm going to yield mm. and I will get up and I will go and do that yeah. because I love you. And it all spills, Sarah. It all spills out of a knowing that I am loved and my mm-hmm. life isn't my own. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the first story to get right. Yes. Is to become more and more right. And I think I think one of the the one of the most important areas of the spiritual maturity mm-hmm. is becoming more and more aware that Jesus is with me. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's one thing to 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 agree with it. It's yeah. one thing to read it. It's yes. another thing to believe it. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing to live out of this increasing awareness. Yes. The, the living God who created heaven and earth mm-hmm. lives in me, mm-hmm. has given me life and hope and the promise of heaven. Yeah. He's given me hope. and Where does it end? And so when that begins to fill in, it begins to spill over. Mm. It spills over to Catherine. It spills over to people beside me. No, it's good. It's all very theoretical in ha- in life. It's harder to implement that. But so those are the building blocks yeah. of the core of the Christian faith: is to let what God has done for me or for you, mm-hmm. and let it show itself. Because we show God yes. in in our relationship. I love that, Clive. That was a great answer. It has to start with Jesus well, and knowing it's His a love. True answer. <laughs> it is His love for us, and it spills out into everything. So I want to go back. You, when I asked you to kind of define what a missionary term was, just mm-hmm. in case somebody had never heard that term, mm-hmm. or it is like you said, a little bit outdated almost mm-hmm. now in our cultural mm-hmm. vernacular. And you had a beautiful definition of that: just building relationships. And sharing just what Jesus has done. Yeah. And just, it doesn't have to be these huge, yeah. amazing things. Can you just, I think for so many people, mm. myself included, mm. that's hard to know. Like, hey, whether we're here in America mm. or we're in Bali or wherever we are, we have the hope of Jesus. Mm. We've made him the Lord yeah. and Savior of our life. But it can be hard or feel daunting to talk about that yeah. or or how to know how to share that yeah. or what to do. Can you just... Yeah. Talk from it. What what could yeah. you just share with us or encourage us to do just in our everyday yeah. life? It, it's a great question, Sarah. And it, it it all comes back to the trueness or, or how authentic that encounter mm-hmm. with God really is. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know how to begin to measure, you know. And it's not really. It doesn't really have to do with the length of period of time. Mm-hmm. Sure, to memorize and know scriptures are extremely important, but that in of itself. Yeah. I know many people who can quote, no scripture, have read all those mm. great ministers and missionaries around the world. Yep. But you get in their presence, mm. uh, you realize that, that, that there's something still missing. Mm-hmm. And for me, uh, where I think God moves most is, you know, another lovely word that um, is congruity. Mm. It's where there's agreement. Mm-hmm. So who Clive is and who Catherine is, uh, in the house and, and when we are alone, yes. is who we are mm-hmm. when we present them in front of another person. I think the other thing, too, I would encourage people is I think this idea about being a, a, a worker, mm-hmm. a Christian worker who lives out their faith mm-hmm. in another land. Um, I think one of the problems is we've professionalized mm-hmm. a lot of ministry. Yes. Even ministry yeah. is a word that we're stepping back from. Yeah. Uh, there are good people doing work, but um, I think one of the things that Catherine and myself are beginning to really realize is, is that um, it is extremely important that we realize that we're not worthy. Mm. We're just servants. Mm-hmm. We're just servants who have done our duty. And um, people can tell if you carry this air, mm-hmm. spiritual maturity, mm. if you've got this educational, and Indonesians are particularly sensitive mm. To this air of they have a word called sombong. It's it's this arrogance is okay. what it is. Okay. But if you can present yourself in a genuine, authentic way, that mm. you're no different than them. Mm-hmm. You're, you're without 
Jesus in my life, I'm in big trouble. Hmm. And and so for us to realize that we really need to go back to some of the basics, you know, um, those early disciples that were known um, to be unschooled men. Yes. Okay. Yep. Who had been with God. Mm-hmm. And what a compliment. Yeah. They had been, they, people could look from a distance and said, this person has been with God. Yes. And I'll, I'll tell you a little story if I may, yeah, because absolutely. it's a beautiful moment. I remember being on a trip down to Bali and I was by myself on the beach, which was rare. And I, I sat on this little coffee early in the morning, having a cafe, a coffee by myself. And there was a woman in the table beside me. I've never seen her before. There was no indication what nationality she was. And she's looking at the volcano, which is across the bay. It's the big central volcano in the whole of Bali. And uh, it's the center of the whole island. And I could not help but notice she had folded her hands. Now, I'm not looking at her face. I'm looking at her side. Mm -hmm. But she folds her fingers interlocked and she bows her head. And she obviously looks like she's praying. Okay. Well... Everybody praying in Bali, everybody's on the beach, and they're praying to the sun. There's a very new, a lot of new age, but um, mm. it's an extremely spiritual place. So there's nothing unusual about that. But there was something, Sarah, that leapt inside of me, hmm. something of joy that I, have, I cannot explain. And the woman then looked up, and she was on her phone, and uh, she got up to leave a little while later, and I could not help... <laughs> but stop her as she passed my table. I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm really sorry, but I hope you don't mind me asking. But did I see you praying? And mm. she said, I was. Everybody on the beach saw her praying if they were looking at her. <laughs> I said, but to whom or to what were you praying? I see you looking. I saw you looking at the mountain. I made yeah. it easy for her, right? Yeah. She could tell me who she was. And she says, I was praying to God. I was praying to Jesus. Huh. And I said, aha. <laughs> I said, let me just tell you that I don't know you. I've never seen you before, but there was something hmm. that leapt in me. He who was in me mm-hmm. identified the living God in you. Hmm. And I call that a glimpse of God. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I want to be it's that beautiful. person, Sarah, who's on the beach mm-hmm. in the fragrance of Christ or yes. his glory is radiant, radiant out of mm-hmm. me. And I know I'd probably fall down on the job there, but that that point, I think, when we walk with God, when we trust Him and we live with Him mm-hmm. and we know Him without any doubt, right? it just flows out of us. Mm-hmm. And they may not be drawn to Clive or Catherine, but I, I have every confidence they are drawn to the living God yes. in me. Yes. And they are. Well, and how beautiful for all of us. I love what you said. Because it was my one of my favorite scriptures where it talks about the disciples. They'd been, they could tell they had been yes. with Jesus. Um, and what what a more beautiful compliment could anybody give? Or not mm. even a compliment, just that anybody would say about any of us that mm. and I can tell that Clive or Sarah or whoever has been with God. And you just said something so beautiful about that we could just be servants. And I think the world as a whole mm. <laughs> would be such a better place as if all of us could really just grasp what it would look like um, to to be servants and just mm. to serve in whatever area we're in, wherever we show up, at the coffee shop, at work, that we would just have a little more of that humility to come and just love people as they are, mm. wherever they're at, mm. no hidden agenda, mm. no nothing, nothing mm. of our gain to mm. get out of a relationship mm. or whatever it is, but just to go... Hey, maybe they need a hello. Even a yeah. simple hello and a smile might yeah. make a big difference to them today. Yeah, and and for them, who many people are really struggling to get a bowl of rice, literally. Mm-hmm. I mean, even more than the scare of COVID, they yeah. have this sense of uh, of really wanting to feed their family. Mm-hmm. And so there are many different ways you can do that in a small way. But I think what we're doing, Sarah, is we're beginning to answer this this deeper question about what it is to to be this person in another place. Yes. And I want to come back to how accessible what we do Mm -hmm. in a small way is available to every believer. And Mm -hmm. we should be doing that. Yeah. But it's this perspective. And so one of the passages is, uh, I don't know um, how often you get to hear this, but Jesus is writing in Luke, Mm -hmm. and he's writing in uh, in chapter 17 at verse 7. It's very interesting because... Because he starts with suppose, and this is where he's wanting them to imagine that there's somebody else. Okay. okay? And so he's putting them in this imaginary mode. He says, suppose you, were, you had a servant plowing or looking after your sheep. Would you say to the servant, when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait 
on, on me while mm. I eat and drink. Mm-hmm. After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? Mm. Now get this, he turns it around. He says, so you also. Mm. He's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to you, Sarah, and he's speaking to me. Mm -hmm. So you also, when you have done everything that you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants Mm. and we have only done our duty. It's good. That's good. You know what? And you shed off all this business Mm -hmm. and activity we call missions or even church. And we just go back to the basics that we are just servants Mm -hmm. and to be happy and content with I'm just a servant that has this privilege to live out my faith. And whoever's listening to that, there's somebody next door, there's somebody Mm -hmm. may well be hurting more than you. Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to translate the living God in your own personal story Mm -hmm. and to be able to communicate that in in words, but in facial expression and heart to heart, yeah. and begin that journey with that person, uh, God can use you. Hmm. You don't have to go to Indonesia. That's very true. Clive, I got to ask you, because I feel like part of it is being able to, to see these things and to be a servant means we sometimes need to slow down yes. a little bit. And I feel like just as I've gotten to observe you over mm. the years or just hear you talk, you and Catherine have just... It's called just... old age. <laughs> <laughs> You've slowed down. No, like, I feel like you do such a great job of when people are with you, mm. you are very present and you make mm. it very known that you're here and you're in this moment with them. Mm. You, I've never experienced you to be looking at your phone mm. or experiencing anything else. What could you just help all of us who mm. maybe struggle a little more with, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a plight, right? And it's partly American plight and there's other places in the world <laughs> that could be like that. So don't totally bash Americans, but we do have some issues we could all say mm-hmm. just about we are tied to our phones or our screens or just it's not even that just the next the next thing yeah. and sometimes we miss the yeah. current moment because we just have so many other things to do and mm-hmm. that's not all wrong yeah <laughs> but what yeah. could you just maybe encourage with us about how to just be yeah. a little more in a yeah. moment <laughs> and present do you have anything that you could share with us well on that? um I, somebody called it the tyranny of the urgent yes yes and I do notice, because when you cross countries, you do notice yeah. these people are much, for example, in, in, in Bali, they're just so much more polite in the mm. intersections and letting people through. Okay. And road rage is rare. I mean, you cut in here and people are like, <laughs> this whole lane for me all the way to O'Fallon is mine. <laughs> Google Maps says it's mine. Yes. And how dare you enter that space? Right. Okay. Right. Um, I know none of these people here on this listening would would ever consider that. We don't have road rage. But um, I I, want to go back to just rather than something uh, practical of how to do. I Mm -hmm. think everybody needs to interpret that. I want to go even further back into it. And again, it comes back to a a spiritual route. It comes Mm -hmm. back to um, an understanding. I think for me, I'm an A-type and I've I've done big projects and I used to manage a a multi-million dollar flight program Mm -hmm. and I bought and sold airplanes and I enjoyed all of that rush. But I think one of the things that has really surprised me on this journey is is yielding that God is in control Mm -hmm. and he can really do these things way better than me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've, in, in our first season out there, Catherine, certainly I, I've reflected back and realized I charged mountains and I raised money and I did things. And I think the Lord in his time has graciously said, Clive, when did I ask you to do that? Hmm. So it, 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 at my um, modest age at 56 and, and, and this joy I have of mm-hmm. being exactly where I am with an amazing wife, Catherine, um, I think... To answer that question, it all comes down to an issue of priority. I mentioned the mm-hmm. self, but it's an issue of priority. Okay. And the priority comes simply down to the fact that God is telling his story. He is at work. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the falsehoods is a lot of our planning and our, our strategizing mm-hmm. comes from the notion that we know where God is going mm-hmm. and what he's doing. That's good. We don't know where he's going, and we don't know what he's doing. Right. But we do know that he's at work in our communities. He's at Mm -hmm. work in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And we have glimpses in the end of Scripture, and maybe one people want to say that's happening now. But we really were asked to be busy about sharing this amazing story. Mm -hmm. And so I defer to one of the great uh, gifts in my life. 
he's an elderly gentleman, and I, the Lord sent him to me. Mm. He came across a, a library door. He came across a library in Ireland um, a number of years ago. I've never met him before, and he's standing beside me, and he introduces himself, and he says that um, he was a missionary. That's how he started. He gave me his name, and he says, I was a missionary in Nigeria for 35 years. I said, when you look back at that time, what comes to mind? He said, Clive, without doubt, it was complete and absolute dependence on the Lord. Mm. And I said, I don't hear that very often. Tell me about it. And he told an extraordinary story. I'll tell you next time you have me over. Okay. <laughs> from Nigeria of how God provided a suit and money for a ring and a wife. Wow. And I've since met with him many times. And I called him about uh, three weeks ago from Indonesia. And I, he remembered me. And he says, I'm 90 now. <laughs> now, he's sitting in a house by himself with a suit and a tie on. He says, I, I walk down to the shop and, and get my food every day. Anne, his wife, is, is in a home. Mm. She, is, uh, she, she is, hasn't been seen for, because of COVID for mm. six months. Wow. And I had two questions for him. Mm. I think they'll be helpful to us. I said, um, uh, I, I asked him, I said, uh, what do you think of um, this COVID business? Yeah. Uh, I beg your pardon. But the first question I asked him, Sarah, was, um, are you lonely? Mm. And he said, lonely, Clive. How could I be lonely? I've got the Lord. <laughs> I love that. And he oh. said, you know, it is this immediacy. <laughs> yeah. It's this quickness that he goes to this mm. perspective that God is with him. Mm -hmm. He is planning my steps. He is heaven waiting for me. The second question I asked him, I said, what do you think of this COVID business? <laughs> And this was his answer. And we know that in all things, mm. God mm -hmm. does good for those who love him mm -hmm. and are called to his purposes. All things, Clive, even <laughs> COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What is COVID when God is preparing mm -hmm. good things? Okay, and that, that is something good, Sarah. That is something That's good. That's something very <laughs> good. How many times have we looked at that scripture, um, uh, Romans eight twenty eight? Mm -hmm. But to own that. And so I, this is my answer to the question I begin to answer. I have slowed down mm -hmm. because I'm now delayed going back. I've got to get some, some oral surgery. Okay. And that means now that after surgery, I have to be here for two weeks because he won't let me fly. Okay. And I still have to do five days in quarantine entering the country mm. in a hotel by myself. And I checked with my wife and she has approved that. And her approach is my approach. This is God. Hmm. He's at work. Mm -hmm. And today, earlier today, I met a guy. I held a door open and he entered. And it turned out that it was somebody I needed to meet. I didn't know I needed to meet. And you see, when you live this less scripted life mm -hmm. and you allow God to fit into it, he can do what he wants to do. And he brings okay. conversations. He brings thoughts. Hmm. He brings places that he can show himself. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to give him some room. Yes, we've got to make some room. Yes. And if we're if our schedule and our resources are full of activities mm -hmm. and fun things to do, the problem is we're we're on a journey to be happy and to be peaceful and hmm. to be content. Mm -hmm. And in many times we're going the wrong way. Yeah. Back off. Curl up on that, on, on that couch there mm -hmm. and open the Word of God. Listen to another podcast from Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise. I don't know about that, but there's probably a lot of other But do you ones. hear what I'm saying, Sarah? <laughs> yes. Make, yes. Room, make room for God yes. in, your, yeah. in, your, in your schedule mm -hmm. and be, be surprised. I think the other thing, too, is to be at ease when there's quiet and there's silence. Yes. Yeah. To enjoy the space. Yeah. Uh, what was the first <laughs> thing that Adam was given? When he was created, he was given, all we hear about is God taking a day off. Yeah. But guess what? Adam had that day with God. He had a whole day. The first mm, day in creation, yeah. he had with God. Yeah. He didn't have to do anything else but just to be with yeah. him. Yeah. 
that's before the you know the snake turned all up the and all of that stuff happened. No, so. <laughs> but I encourage you guys to slow down and yes. make room for God in your life. Clive, that's so good. Sadly, like the time goes so fast when we have conversations. Before we kind of wrap this out, do you have anything else that you want to share with us before we well, end our thank time, you, Sarah? <laughs> I just want to thank you and Will and what you guys Aww. do here. And blessings on sharing mm. this good word out to people. Thank you. And, and I just trust that somebody's hearing something today that mm-hmm. will give them a, a, a glimmer of hope. Mm-hmm. We talk about a crack in the wall in Ireland where there's a glimmer that comes through mm-hmm. that dark wall. And, and his name is Jesus. And, yeah. and I, I just pray and hope that there's something that's been shared. There's a crack in the wall in, in your difficult mm-hmm. life. And maybe the wall's closing in on you. And, 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 I, and, and, and I I don't mean to take away from that, yeah. but I encourage you that, that to turn your heart and your orientation mm-hmm. to God through His Son, Jesus, uh, and let go of some stuff, let go of some injuries maybe people have done to you, mm-hmm. and turn your face and ask Him. Here's a prayer. A prayer I'd have for you each is that ask God to reveal himself to you personally, Hmm. show himself to you in a way that you, and after a while you begin to recognize him. It'll be something in a song. It'll be something in a piece of scripture. It'll be something, uh, a memory that will come out of nowhere that, but when it accompanies you with joy and Hmm. peace, maybe with something that you, even an extra level of joy and peace and your heart feels lifted Ah, this is the mark of the Spirit of God. And begin <laughs> to good. thank Him, but ask Him to show Himself to you, because He wants to show Himself yes. to you. Yes. He wants to know you, and He wants you to know Him. Mm-hmm. Of all the gods around the world, mm-hmm. whether the Hindu gods or other gods of majority religions around the world, our God, the true Creator God, is the only God who wants to be known, mm-hmm. and He wants to know you. What did the woman at the well say? She went to Samaria. She had a whole world turned upside down, and she said, Come, do you want to meet the one who knows all about me? <laughs> yes. And she had a bunch of stuff that mm-hmm. not everybody liked. Yeah. So that's my prayer, and I wish you all every blessing, and uh, thank you for having me on today. Of course, Clive. Thank you so much for being here. I do have one last question. Mm. You kind of answered it a little bit, but I'm going to give you a chance to add something else if you want to. Okay. Because the show is called Now That's Something Good, Mm. can you just, do you have anything, just other random good things? I feel bad asking you because you really have shared so many good, great things with us already, and there's no qualifier. It could be anything, just one last Good, good. Yeah. Thing. You know, we just look at present history. And I mm-hmm. think one of the things that about this church, about the people in the United States is one of the, one of the great values is safety and security and comfort. Mm-hmm. And those are good things in themselves. But this last year, the world has tremored, tremored mm-hmm. and the earth has moved mm-hmm. in many ways we could never have imagined. And I just want to come back to the, the core message of Scripture. Mm-hmm. And I can't get away from it, okay? Because it's a great message. It's a good message. God wants um, us to know Him and to be with Him. Mm. And despite despite difficulties, challenges at job, relational issues, friends have let us down. Mm. Uh, maybe you've been through COVID and it really took the legs out underneath you. Maybe you've known somebody who was gone from COVID. Yeah. And I'm sorry for that. Mm-hmm. But I come back to the fact that the message and the hope that we have in Jesus Mm -hmm. is a good message. And you can have that good message. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for you. It's for your husband. It's for your wife. It's for your kids. And it's for your people that you meet. Yes. And so get on board with that. Good. (laughs) That's, that's, something good. That is definitely something good. (laughs) Well, thank you, Clive, so much for being here. It's been a real pleasure. You're most welcome. God bless you, Sarah. Thank you. Wow. What an incredible, fun conversation with my friend Clive. I hope that you enjoyed it and it brought you some encouragement along the way. I love listening to Clive speak. He speaks with just such a genuine heart um, for others. And it's just so peaceful and calming listening to him share. And like I said, I hope that you really enjoyed and were able to walk away with something as we heard from his story. We talked a lot about just how to kind of hear from God or how to know where he might be leading you. And I just want to encourage you, if you're feeling a prompting or feeling like maybe you're supposed to be stepping into something new or moving into something new, and I want to encourage you just to lean in and just keep following God and what he's 
leading you into. As we've said around here a lot, you know our heart is that so many extraordinary things happen out of the everyday ordinary, and God is working in and throughout every one of those moments, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So again, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Would you do us a favor? If you did, and if you got something out of this today, would you take a moment and go share this with a friend? Maybe maybe you know someone who's struggling or just might need some extra encouragement or someone that you're like, hey, you know what? I know they would love hearing this. Would you share it with them? And would you also take a moment to go rate and review this episode and the show wherever you listen, wherever you podcast, it helps us. And again, it's not about Will and Sarah and us getting like our name out there in any way, shape or form. This is about our heart just to want to continue to share stories. And the more that these things get rate and reviewed, it just pops them up higher in all of the podcast platforms so that other people can find them and hear the amazing stories and just come and hang out with us um, like we get to do every week together. But we are so grateful that you would spend a little bit of your time with us each week as we just get to have conversations together and hear stories. Again, as always, if you need anything, reach out to us anytime at podcastsaragood.com. We love hearing from you and we love hearing how you're connecting with the stories and how they're encouraging you. So feel free to drop us a note anytime. Well, friends, I hope you have a great week. And as always, take a moment, think, think about something good and think about how you might be able to go and share a little good with someone today. We'll see you next time.